heard disturbing things about TTIP. I'm trying to find out more. So, John, what is TTIP? Well, the Transatlantic Trade and Investment Partnership, or we call it TTIP for short, is this new comprehensive trade and investment deal which is being cooked up between the European Commission and the US government. far-reaching deal which is going to affect almost every single part of our lives, our societies, our communities, the economy and also the environment for the future. Specifically, what will TTIP do? Keith? TTIP will give more access to foreign uh, governments from, from businesses um, from America to bid for privatised services of the NHS. <laughs> How do you know TTIP would impact on the NHS? So we've seen in black and white that health services, medical services, physiotherapy, dental services, they're all included within TTIP and that's been confirmed both by our government and also by the European Commission. Blanche, tell me about the NHS. So with TTIP, we're likely to see more and more big American corporations providing NHS services. Um, also, as we know, there's already privatisation in our NHS, but if any future government wanted to get rid of that privatisation and wanted to repeal the Health and Social Care Act, it would probably be impossible for them to do so without risking being sued by big American health companies. Sued? Yesterday, I heard that big corporations could sue governments. The third pillar of, of TTIP is this new power it will give to investors to be able to sue our governments for loss of profits. And this is a completely new right. US corporations will be able to come in in their thousands and start suing the government, even if it's introduced public health policies or environmental policies or other social standards which we consider to be important. And the, the cases of this already are extraordinary. You know, when Germany decided to phase out nuclear power, it's now being sued for billions and billions of euros. Why would governments elect to sue themselves? Um, I, I, it's very difficult to say why governments would want to open themselves up to being sued. Um, basically what they're saying is that they want to provide protections for big businesses if they want to invest in the UK and encourage them to invest in the UK. But what the, what the reality of what's going to happen is that the government will be liable to be sued by big businesses if they do anything that, and pass any laws that might hurt those corporations' interests. So there are some examples across the world where Philip Morris, the big tobacco, um, big tobacco company, is suing a government who's brought in plain packaged cigarettes. What if the government chose to raise the minimum wage um, and they, they would then run the risk of being sued by, um, by any big corporations whose, whose interests were going to be hurt by that? Who is organising all of this? Um, the deal's being negotiated behind closed doors at the moment. There are EU negotiators and US negotiators as well, but these are not people who have been elected by us. It's a deal which is being negotiated entirely in secret. They've put a 30-year ban on all public access to the key documentation behind TTIP. And also it's one which none of our MPs in this country or any other national parliament across Europe even get any sight of until right at the end when it's too late. That's weird. It sounds profoundly undemocratic. It feels profoundly undemocratic. Um, it feels very strange in the 21st century to imagine that people are negotiating things that could affect all of our lives and yet they won't tell us exactly what's going on. I was first alerted to TTIP because of a food scare. Well, the food industry is something that is worrying many, many people because 
Um, the concern is that we drive standards down um, because there has to be a regulatory conformity between something that can sell in the US and something that can sell in, in the EU. The US Secretary of State for Agriculture has basically said you don't get to choose. Under free trade, you have to accept these products because if they're good enough for US citizens, then they're also good enough for European consumers. Now, um, if you look at GMOs, 70% uh, of all processed food in America has got GMOs. If you look at the pesticides that are in common use in America, uh, there's 82 which actually are forbidden in Europe. Also, we have the growth hormones that in the US they use for 90% of all beef production. The cattle are injected with these growth hormones, they grow more quickly, they can be slaughtered earlier, and therefore they become more profitable. But in Europe, those growth hormones have been banned because they've been found to be carcinogenic. And as far as animal welfare standards are concerned, well, really the, the US doesn't have many animal welfare standards. So we would see, uh, we would see worse conditions uh, for animals uh, in, in farming. I'm sure there's a lot more to say, but just for the moment, let's pause. Keith and John, thank you. Mm -hmm.